Welcome to New Hanover Regional Medical Center Orthopedic Hospital. Thank you for your participation in this educational opportunity. My name is Sandra Oglesby. I am a registered nurse of over 30 years. I will use the next 40 minutes to help you prepare for your upcoming orthopedic surgery. During this presentation, I will address your preparation for surgery, what to expect while you are in the hospital, your discharge and aftercare. Our healthcare team's goal is for you to have the best possible outcome. As a part of your preparation for surgery, we recommend that you inform your primary care physician about your upcoming surgery. You will likely be seen by a medical doctor prior to surgery. The visit with the medical doctor takes place during your pre-admission testing appointment. Your primary care physician and other medical specialists will appreciate knowing you are having surgery. You do not need to make an appointment with your specialist. However, the medical doctor will need to know you are being seen by a specialist. Pain control is very important after your surgery. If you are under the care of a pain management specialist, your surgeon needs to be aware of this prior to your surgery in order to provide you with the best possible pain control. If you have dental issues requiring intervention, speak to your surgeon and our dentist about necessary dental procedures. Please note, having some dental procedures close to your surgery date may delay your surgery. We encourage you to complete advanced directives prior to your surgery. If you have advanced directives or health care power of attorney, bring a copy of your document with you to the hospital to be placed on your chart. If you do not have one and are interested in preparing an advanced directive, health care power of attorney, forms are available for you. We encourage you to discuss your wishes with your family prior to surgery. It is important that we have an up-to-date list of your medications. This includes all prescription medications, vitamins, herbal supplements, and any other over-the-counter medications you are taking. Bring your medications in their original packaging with you to your pre-admission testing appointment. To ensure your safety while in the hospital, all medications are administered by nursing staff. For your safety, our policy is that you not have any medications at your bedside. Please be honest about your drug and alcohol use, as they may affect your anesthesia and medications. Eating a healthy diet is important both before and after surgery, as it helps with the healing process. Information in your preoperative booklet can assist you in making healthy choices for daily meals. We recommend that you eat a well-balanced diet that is high in fiber and iron. New Hanover Regional Medical Center Orthopedic Hospital is a tobacco-free campus. This includes the use of e-cigarettes. The use of tobacco products delay healing, increases the risk of infection, and may increase your risk of developing blood clots after surgery. It is always best to quit smoking. However, there are options available to help you through this process. Your doctor may discuss these options with you. Your surgeon's office will schedule your appointment for pre-admission testing. This appointment will take place on the New Hanover Regional Medical Center Orthopedic Hospitals campus. You will check in at the registration desk, then you will be directed to the pre-admission testing area, where you will be examined by one of our medical doctors, known as hospitalists. During this appointment, the hospitalist will review your medications, do blood work, and any other test or treatment that is necessary to help you be prepared for your upcoming surgery. This appointment may take several hours to complete. Please review the list in your pre-operative booklet of what to bring and what not to bring with you to the hospital. You may be asked to bring your medication in their original packaging to pre-admission testing. 
Once the hospitalist has reviewed your medications, they will order what you need to take while in the hospital. Our pharmacy will supply your medications. Only bring your list of medications with you to the hospital on your day of surgery. To prevent loss of jewelry, money, or other personal valuables while in the hospital, we ask you to not bring them to the hospital. Inform staff of personal belongings you have with you so we may help keep track of them as you move through the surgical care departments. Respiratory therapists will assist you after surgery with oxygen needs. If you use a CPAP machine, we will supply this for you. However, we ask that you bring your own mask. Also, add your prescribed settings to your medication list that you bring to pre-admission testing. If you are unsure of your settings, ask your physician. New Hannibal Regional Medical Center is proud to offer an affordable, clean, and comfortable place to rest, shower, and prepare meals, our hospitality house. This is a good option for out-of-town patients who may desire to come the night before surgery or for a caregiver to stay while you are in the hospital. It costs $35 a night. Room requests may be made in advance. Contact information is in your booklet. Much preparation takes place before you are taken to the surgical suite. To ensure a smooth transition, you may be asked to arrive up to four hours prior to your actual operating room time. You will meet with your surgeon and anesthesia team prior to being transported to the operating room. After your surgery, while you are in the recovery room, your family may be taken to your room to await your arrival. You will be moved to your room as soon as you are fully recovered. More information will be given to you in pre-admission testing about your day of surgery. The following slides will go over what you can expect while in the hospital. After having anesthesia, your post-operative diet will start with drinking clear liquids, which if tolerated, your diet may be advanced to solid foods. Our meal service at your request room service is available to all patients. You may make your meal selections from the menu in your room. If you forget, a member of our food services team will contact you. Your caregiver may also order from the same menu for a small prepaid amount. Your recovery after surgery is very important to your health care team. We will frequently check your vital signs to determine how well you are recovering. This includes the possibility of interrupting your sleep. While this may disrupt your ability to rest, this is important to ensure your safety after surgery. Your breathing pattern is temporarily affected by anesthesia after surgery. Therefore, you will likely be using oxygen for a period to increase your air exchange. The respiratory therapist will check your oxygen levels after your surgery and determine when it's safe for you to discontinue using oxygen. They will also teach you how to use the incentive spirometry. This tool is used to help you take deep breaths. Taking deep breaths help prevent you from getting pneumonia. Anesthesia may cause temporary urinary dysfunction in the form of urinary retention or incontinence. Please communicate urinary issues with your primary care team. A sterile dressing will be covering your incision. This protective covering is in place to help prevent infection. Therefore, avoid the urge to peek. Your dressing will be changed as ordered by your surgeon. We will teach you how to care for your dressing and when and how to change it. An IV is placed prior to your surgery. You will receive fluids and medications through the IV. IV fluids are given after surgery to help keep you hydrated. You will also get an antibiotic through the IV before and after surgery. IV fluids will be discontinued when you are drinking adequate fluids, urinating independently, 
or as the doctor orders. The IV catheter remains in place until you are discharged. Deep vein thrombosis, also known as blood clot, can form in deep veins of your legs. A blood clot that breaks away and travels to your lungs is called a pulmonary embolus. Patients who have joint replacement surgery are at a higher risk of developing blood clots. The following are treatments aimed at preventing blood clots from forming. Ankle pumps, sequential compression device, compression hose, and blood thinner medication. Ankle pumps are an exercise done by having your knee straight, point your foot down, and pull your foot up as far as possible. Perform these while in bed or while sitting with both feet to increase blood circulation. Sequential compression device, SCDs, are white inflatable sleeves placed on your lower legs that sequentially compress. These will be worn until you are out of bed and walking, and then periodically while in bed in the hospital. Based on physician preference, you may have compression TED hose or ACE wraps in place after surgery. You will be on a medication used to thin your blood as ordered by your surgeon. Signs and symptoms of a blood clot are sudden swelling in either leg unrelated to the surgery that will not improve with elevation of that limb, pain and or tenderness in the calf of either leg. If you experience any of these symptoms, notify a member of your healthcare team immediately. The number one way to prevent the spread of infection is proper hand washing. Everyone Entering your room should be using the hand sanitizer located in your room. We encourage you to speak up when you do not see us sanitizing or washing our hands. IV antibiotics are given during and after surgery to prevent infection. Infections are rare following total joint replacement surgery. However, monitoring your incision site will help you determine if your surgeon may need to assess your incision. Signs and symptoms to look for are increased drainage beneath the dressing, redness surrounding the incision or dressing, opening or separation of the incision edges, increased pain at the incision site. If you notice these symptoms, notify a member of your health care team. Spiritual care is available to you during your hospital stay. If you desire a visit from the chaplain, your nurse can arrange that visit. The telephone in this picture is a hospital-issued telephone. This is how we communicate with patients, physicians, and each other. If we need to answer the telephone, we may need to briefly step away from you as to protect everyone's privacy. For the quickest response, call your nurse or nurse assistant directly. Their telephone numbers are on the whiteboard. If you cannot find your telephone, use the call bell as your second choice. You play an important role in your safety while in the hospital. You are at high risk for falling because you are under the influence of anesthesia, pain medication, and narcotics. You had surgery. You are in an unfamiliar environment, and you will be attached to necessary equipment and tubes that may easily trip you up. Each room has this sign posted. It is a reminder to you to not get out of bed without calling for assistance. It is also a communication tool letting everyone who comes into the room know what kind of assistance you need. Physical therapy determines when you can safely walk without nursing assistance. Our staff is required to assist you when you get out of bed, 
get up from the chair, go to or return from the bathroom anytime you are walking. The majority of patients who fall do so while attempting to do something on their own without requesting assistance. Please call. Do not fall. We are here to assist you. Hello, my name is Caroline. I'm one of the physical therapists here on the team. I am going to spend about 15 minutes explaining to you what we are wanting you to do between now and surgery to make your recovery easier and safer, along with what to expect from physical therapy while you are here in the hospital after surgery. Our job is to make sure you are safely able to do the things you need to do to return home after surgery. The first thing we want you to do today, while it's still fresh in your mind, is to go home and walk through your house as if you have a walker. They are usually about 25 inches wide. You will need to make sure there's room for the walker between the bed and the wall or the dresser. There's room to get into the bathroom and into your living room seating area. Sometimes you might need to remove the bathroom door and hang a curtain or move the recliner so you can fit the walker between it and the sofa in your TV area. It is much easier to do this now before surgery than on the first day you get home after surgery. The second thing we want you to do the night before surgery is to pick up your throw rugs. We understand that they serve a purpose. They cover marks on the rug. They keep dirt from getting in the house. But they really increase your fall risk with the wheeled walker. You are going to have a phenomenal surgery. It is going to change your life. But we know you don't want to fall and have to have it again. So pick up those throw rugs, throw them in the closet, and put them back out again when you're done using the walker. If you have more than two steps going into your home, Try to make sure you have at least one rail to get up those steps. If you need a walker to rely on to walk on level surfaces, you can see why we want you to have support from a rail going up your steps. Please take out the exercise handout from your folder. You will notice the handout doesn't quite match the slides, but you should be able to follow along. We want you to do these exercises not so much to strengthen or stretch things, but to teach your brain and your muscles what you will be doing after surgery. It is much easier to learn these now before surgery than it is after surgery. We want you to get to the point that these exercises are automatic so that when you start doing them after surgery, you know exactly what to do. As the pictures show, we want you to do these laying down on the bed, sofa, wherever you can be relatively flat. The first one is the ankle pump. Our nursing presenter explained the importance of these for circulation but we also want you to start doing them before all your leg exercises because it helps start moving the knee and the hip joint and all the muscles up your leg. With your knee straight, you pull the toes all the way up and push them all the way down, bending your ankle and repeating. This exercise introduces motion, so we want you to move at a moderate speed, not slow and no holds. The second exercise is the quad set. Your quads are the muscles on the front of the thigh, you can bend your opposite knee like in the picture to protect your back if you need to, but otherwise, with the knees straight, press the backs of the knees down into the bed or the sofa, hold for a few seconds, and relax. If you're having a knee replacement and your knee doesn't go straight, place a small pillow or a rolled towel under your knee to fill up the space under it and give you something to press against. The third exercise is the gluteal set. Your gluteal muscles are your buttocks muscles, and you are essentially going to squeeze your buttocks together, hold them for a few seconds, and relax. These first three exercises don't really move your hip or your knee very much, but they get the muscles warmed up and keep things from getting stiff. The next exercise, we start moving things. The heel slide. You basically start with both your legs flat, and slowly pull your heel up towards your rear end, bending the knee. You might not be able to bend it much because you need surgery, but bend it as much as you can comfortably and make sure you can do it with your other leg too, so your brain learns the right motion. After bending, you slide it back down flat and repeat. No holds on this one. The straight leg raise is very important to help you get out of bed as your leg may feel very heavy after surgery. With one leg bent, I want you to keep the other knee straight as you lift and lower the leg from the bed, no more than 12 inches or so. It's very important you keep that knee straight while you're lifting and lowering. We understand that you might not be able to raise it very much right now, especially if you need a hip replacement, 
but do as much as you are able and then make sure you do it with the other leg also. Hip abduction. Keeping one leg still, slide the other leg out to the side while keeping your knee straight. Do not lift it. Slide it out, then slide it back in towards the other leg, remembering to keep that knee straight. Do not move both your legs at the same time. If you're having your hip replaced, you may only be able to move it about an inch. That's okay, do that and make sure you repeat it on the other side also. If you are having your knee replaced and this exercise makes your knee hurt a lot, we don't want you to do it. Sometimes the knee cannot stabilize enough and it puts too much stress on it. That said, we don't want these exercises to increase your overall pain. They may be uncomfortable while you're doing them, but if you end up needing more pain medications or not being able to sleep as well because of increased pain, try to decrease a little. Instead of 10 repetitions, do five. Instead of twice a day, do once. We don't want you to come into surgery with increased inflammation. We just want you to be more aware of your exercises. Now for the sitting exercises. Seated knee extensions. You are going to sit on a surface that supports your whole upper leg or thigh with your foot barely resting on the ground or not touching. If you are taller, you might need to use a recliner, the edge of your bed, the kitchen counter, whatever works for you. Without lifting the knee, you are going to raise the foot and straighten the knee as much as you can, hold for a few seconds, and then lower it with control. Seated push-ups are strengthening exercises for your arms. You are going to be using your arms for everything, sitting up out of bed, standing up, and supporting on the walker with every step you take. We have people who need to rest because their arms get tired, not their legs. So we want you to sit with your feet flat and square on the floor and do push-ups with your arms. If you have shoulder problems, start at the top and do little dips. Once you can do 10 repetitions easily, take the leg you're having operated on and place the foot out in front of you and do the push-ups with your arms and the other leg. Remember, we want you to do these exercises before surgery so you will be better able to do them afterwards. When will you be seen for your physical therapy visit? You may be seen either the day of surgery or the day after, dependent on your surgeon's order and your recovery from anesthesia. What do we do in physical therapy? In your first visit, we are going to ask you how you were doing before surgery. Did you use a cane or a walker? Did you need help with anything? Then we are going to find out what you need to do to go home. Do you have steps? Do you have grab bars in your shower, an elevated toilet seat, any equipment to help you be safe when you return to your home? Once we know how you were doing before surgery and what you need to do to go home, next we assess what you are able to do right then. We check how much help you need with sitting up out of bed, standing up, and walking. You will use the walker that is in the room. We will adjust it to your size. That walker will stay with you in your room while you are here and be your walker. If you have your own walker, we will want you to bring it to the hospital so that we can measure it properly to your height. If you don't have a walker, do not go out and get one before surgery. While you're here, our case managers will assist you with obtaining the correct walker. With your walker, once you've stood up, you might take a few steps, you might walk in the hallway, depending on how good that leg is working for you and how you're feeling after the anesthesia. If you're walking very well and safely, we may try steps with you in that first session. Occasionally, some patients experience side effects of anesthesia, such as lightheadedness, dizziness, or nausea. If this happens at any point in the progression of your session, we will assist you to the recliner or the bed, depending on where you are at the time. We ask you not to get frustrated and understand that this is most likely just the effects of the medications or anesthesia, and it will be better the next time we see you. We want to make sure you are safe. Once we determine what you are able to do, then we will establish your plan of care, which will outline the things that need to happen in order for you to return home safely. The number of visits you have with physical therapy depends on your specific needs. Some patients may only need one session, others may need more to reach their discharge goals. Your individual plan of care will be tailored to your individual needs for a safe discharge. While you're here, we will see you one to two times a day, depending on your progress and your goals, until you are safe for your discharge. Your schedule may be different from day to day. We will communicate with nursing throughout your stay to make sure you're ready for your therapy sessions. 
We want to have your undivided attention for your first physical therapy visit. It is hard to concentrate on physical therapy if you need to use the bathroom. Therefore, we ask you to please allow the nursing staff to assist you with your toileting needs before your session, either with a bedpan, a urinal, or a bedside commode. Remember, your first session is for your physical therapist to assess what you are able to do, and you may not be safe to walk to the bathroom yet, as you might be experiencing those possible side effects of anesthesia, such as dizziness, lightheadedness, or nausea. If you are able to walk at least 25 feet without getting lightheaded or dizzy, then we can safely assist you to the bathroom, and your nursing staff will be able to continue with this level of support. If you are unable to walk that far without getting dizzy, staff will assist you to use the bedside commode or the bedpan for your toileting needs until you are able to walk to the bathroom. Thank you for your time. I hope this has been helpful. Congratulations on your decision, and thank you for choosing New Hanover Regional Medical Center Orthopedic Hospital. I hope to see you soon. A case management representative may meet with you during your pre-admission testing visit to discuss your discharge plans. They will also see you after your surgery to confirm your discharge plans. The case management team will help you determine an appropriate discharge plan. Your discharge plan is based on your progress with physical therapy, your home support, your insurance, and the functional layout of your home. Prior to surgery, check with your insurance company to see what benefits you have and what your financial responsibilities are. Ask your insurance company if you have coverage for home health, physical therapy, and durable medical equipment. Home health physical therapy is covered under Medicare Part A and may require a copay. Durable medical equipment is covered under Medicare Part B and may require a copay. For further information, call 1 800 Medicare. Just the first sentence home health physical therapy. Once you are in your hospital room and have any questions related to your discharge, please ask your nurse to speak to a case management representative. Your case manager or social worker is available Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is expected that you will have some pain following your surgery. Our goal is to keep your pain at a tolerable level for you. You must be able to participate in your physical therapy. Therefore, your physician orders various medications to assist in controlling your pain. A pain scale is used to communicate the level of pain you are experiencing and the effectiveness of the medications we administer. Each patient's tolerance of pain is unique. Your nurse will discuss with you how to best use the scale to communicate your pain and pain relief. We encourage you to help us stay ahead of your pain. Do not let your pain level get unbearable before asking for pain medication. Cold therapy is used to assist in your pain control. Cold therapy in the form of an ice pack is applied on total hip replacement patients while in the hospital. Ice packs are used on both total hip and knee replacement patients as needed when you go home. Total knee replacement patients in the hospital will have cold therapy delivered by a machine known as a polar care. A polar care machine circulates cold water through a wrap applied to your surgical site. Both ice packs and polar care work to decrease swelling. Next, I will address how you may help prepare yourself for your care after discharge. It is important for you to know issues that may occur and for you to know how to address them. Continue frequent hand washing. Tell loved ones who think they may be sick or loved ones who are sick to not visit you while you are recovering. 
It is important for you to review the signs and symptoms of infection in your preoperative booklet. Surgeons have their preferences for when to shower and for care of your incision. Your surgeon will communicate to you when bathing is permitted. All patients are asked to refrain from tub baths, spas, and pools. Constipation is common even after discharge because of your decreased activity and medications. You may be given a stool softener twice a day to help manage constipation. Be sure to drink at least six to eight eight ounce glasses of non-alcoholic fluids and eat foods high in fiber. If you experience continued constipation, contact your pharmacist for their over-the-counter recommendations. Your activity level and continuing physical therapy are an important part of your recovery and the success of your surgery. You and your surgeon will determine if home therapy or outpatient therapy will be best for you. Your recovery and ultimate success postoperatively is largely based on your participation in therapy. If receiving home health or outpatient physical therapy, you will need to perform the exercises given to you even on the days you are not scheduled for physical therapy. For the first few days at home, take it easy and adjust to your new joint and assisted device in your home setting. Week two and beyond, take short walks using your assisted device as instructed by your physical therapist. Week three through six, you should be progressively returning to your before surgery function. Please note, no driving until you have full range of motion and are pain free. You must not drive while under the influence of pain medication. Your surgeon's office will schedule your post-operative visit before you have surgery. If you have questions about your appointment, contact your surgeon's office after you are discharged from the hospital. Some patients will also be scheduled to see their primary care physician after leaving the hospital. If you need to see your primary care physician, we will let you know prior to discharge. We are dedicated to ensuring the best outcome for you and your new joint. Your surgeon is dedicated to this outcome as well. A case manager from your surgeon's office may call you while you are in the hospital and after discharge to check your recovery progress and answer any questions you may have. A registered nurse from the orthopedic hospital will call you 24 to 48 hours after your discharge to home. This call is to check your recovery progress as well as answer questions you may have. While you may receive multiple calls, the purpose is the same, to ensure the best outcome for you and your new joint. Monday through Friday, during business hours, before and or after your surgery, your surgeon's office is able to answer your questions. If you have an urgent manner and need to speak with a physician representative, you may call the office and speak to the on-call provider. If you have a general question, please call the New Hanover Regional Medical Center Orthopedic Hotline at 910-777-3501. Someone is available 24 hours, seven days a week to assist you. We appreciate your participation in preparing yourself for your upcoming procedure.